everyone, welcome back to Alice and the Giant Bookshelf. In today's video, I'm going to be talking about the Women's Prize for Nonfiction and my predictions for next week's shortlist. Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel or welcome if you are new. My name's Alice and I have way too many books. And in today's video, I thought I would try very hard to predict some of the books that are going to be on the shortlist for the Women's Prize for Nonfiction. This is a new prize this year. The long list was announced back in February and over a month in, I have only actually completed reading two of the books on the 16 book long list and I've started one more, um, which I hope I might get finished before the shortlist, but I'm not going to rush it. It is very hard to predict on that basis, especially as uh, I feel like a few of the books have only actually come out this month and I therefore haven't really heard of anybody having read them yet. Yeah, this is a bit of a shot in the dark type predictions list, but I thought first of all I would talk about my wish list and again having only read two there are only a couple of things that I took into consideration for my wish list. The first one was if I'd read them or started to read them and really enjoyed them or was really enjoying them I have put them on my wish list and the other spots I've given to books that I just still really feel very enthusiastic about reading. Top of my wish list for the Women's Prize for Nonfiction shortlist, which we anticipate will be of six books, would be Wifedom by Anna Funder. This is the first book that I finished from the Women's Prize for Nonfiction long list, and I do have a review out of that one. If you want to check that out, I will link it down below and I was really really impressed with this one. I thought Anna Funder did a great job of bringing to life a, a woman from history and her marriage with George Orwell. And I feel like I would be very disappointed if I didn't see it on the shortlist because I think it is a book worthy of winning the inaugural Women's Prize for Nonfiction. It's very, very well researched and in comparison to the other book that I have completed reading, I enjoyed it far, far more. I thought it was very, very engaging. So I really, really hope to see that on the shortlist on Wednesday. I would also be really, really disappointed not to see this book on the shortlist, which is Thunderclap by Laura Cumming, a memoir of art and life and sudden death. Now, I, I'm only about 45 pages into this one, although it is quite a short book and there are pictures of paintings in this, so hopefully I will have finished reading this by the time this video comes out maybe, or certainly by the time the shortlist comes out. What is jumping out at me about this so far is that I really, really love the writing style. I think Laura Cumming can really, really write. I've already looked up in the back of the book what her other books are because her tone is just so engaging and what she's writing about is also really interesting, which is mainly Dutch paintings. And in particular, this painter, Carol Fabritius. Really, really love this so far. It's already won, I think, the Writer's Prize for nonfiction this year. And I really think that this would be a worthy winner of this prize as well. I would certainly expect and love to see it shortlisted. So as I've said, beyond that, my wish list is gonna have to be very much a shot in the dark, the same as my predictions. So I would say the four books that I'm most excited to still pick up from this long list, and these are definitely not the only books I'm still excited to pick up from this long list. I would say that overall the non-fiction long list is exciting me a lot more than the fiction long list. I would still really, really like to get to The Dictionary People by Sarah Ogilvy, which I think is going to be exactly my sort of cup of tea, a book about words and the people who created the Oxford English Dictionary. Highly looking forward to that one. As soon as that comes in from the library, I will be reading that one. Secondly, I would still really, really like to read A Flat Place, Noreen Massoud's memoir, and I think that that one will be really interesting too. The other memoir I would really like to get to still 
is How to Say Babylon by Safia Sinclair and I am on the waiting list for that as an audiobook so I'm hoping that I will reach the top of the queue on that soon and the final one that would make up my sort of wish list of books that I still want to read on this list would be Codependent, Living in the Shadow of AI by Madhamita Mergia. And this one, I believe, was the most recent book to come out. As far as I know, this book still isn't out yet. I really think that if you are showcasing 16 non-fiction books on a long list, they should either all be out <laughs> already or the ones that are not out yet should be given a chance for people to read it before the shortlist, I feel. I am in the queue to get this one from the library as well, but obviously it has to be ordered in once the book comes out and could be some time before I get to read this one. But nonetheless, I'm gonna put it on my wish list of books that I would still really like to prioritise. Now I haven't put on this list Intervals by Marion Brooker, even though I'm getting the impression from my friends that it's a really, really good book. The reason I haven't included it on this really, really excited to read list is because I don't think I'm actually going to be able to get hold of this one. I did make myself a rule that I was only going to read books from the Women's Prize from the library or on audio. There's no audio book of this one that I can find and my library doesn't have it. I'm hoping that if that one was to reach the shortlist that they would get it in. Let's try and predict what the Women's Prize judges might put on their shortlist and I think this is a lot harder than it sounds because we have 16 books and they'll be reducing that number to six which means that 10 books are not going to make the list and I would not like to be one of the judges trying to work out which ones to leave out. In reality, I think that the chances are that we won't see more than two sort of memoir books on the shortlist. And I'm going to count Thunderclap as a memoir since it has the word memoir on the cover and in the subtitle. So I am championing that on the basis of the 40 pages I've read. I think it's a really great book so well written and really really accessible to read so I think that Thunderclap will be my first pick for predicting this list and I'm counting that as a memoir so I think there will only be one more spot for a memoir and I think that that will probably be between intervals, How to Say Babylon and A Flat Place. I'm not too sure if any of the others would actually fall into being memoirs but those are the three that I have heard very good things about and I think that How to Say Babylon might just edge this one. I have heard really really positive things about it so I'm going to give it the edge over a flat place and over intervals as well because I think intervals is about extremely difficult subject matter and I think that the element of the prize that talks about accessibility. This may not be a book really for everyone, I don't think, because of the trigger warnings in it. So I think that How to Say Babylon, I'm going to give the edge over the others. Thunderclap and How to Say Babylon would be my two memoirs that I think the judges will pick. I also think that at least one of the books making up the shortlist, I think, will be about like modern times, a current up to the minute type topics about our world as it is. And I think that within this, this could be Doppelganger, which I have read. It could be Codependent, which we haven't actually seen yet. It could be Vulture Capitalism, which I believe has only very recently come out. Those are the three books that I would kind of consider to be falling into that niche of non-fiction. I confidently predicted that Doppelganger would be on this prize list and it was. I'm not sure whether to predict it as one that the judges will put through. I wouldn't put it on my personal short list and that would be again because of the criteria of accessibility. I found this quite a complicated and difficult book to read and I very much think it's a book that appears to be about something that it is not quite about, which does sort of play into the sort of doppelganger and doubles thing, but I can still see the judges listing this. So I'm probably in the absence of 
having been able to read Codependent or Vulture Capitalism, I'm going to say I think maybe Doppelganger will appear on the shortlist. I would be very, very surprised not to see one or two spots going to historical books. After all, we do have more than one historian judge this year. I think that that could be wifedom. I would describe wifedom as sort of historical, about people, about a time, but obviously fundamentally it's about one person. It's kind of a biography as well, but it could be that I think. It could be Young Queens, which I really haven't heard a lot about. I haven't heard anybody review this yet. It could be All That She Carried. It could be The Britannias, which I think is more of a geographical historical book, along with possibly Some People Need Killing and Shadows at Noon. And I feel like both of those books I'm kind of classifying mentally as place history. It could be The Dictionary People. I am going to go with, in this category, I think the two books that are linked to history that are going to come up are going to be Wifedom and All That She Carried. I just think that both of these books have been really re well received as far as I know. I think that they might be the ones the judges pick. We have got more than one science-y related book on the long list, so I think there will be one science pick. And I think that that will be between Eve by Kat Bohannon or Matrescence by Lucy Jones. And I'm going to go with Matrescence. I think that while both of these books are heavily about women and women's bodies, and it could go either way, perhaps we'll even see both on the short list. I think that motherhood and the various intertwining topics around that will prove a very popular topic for the Women's Prize. So although Eve and Matrescence, I think both represent this prize really, really well. I'm going to predict the judges go with Matrescence. Yeah, so I guess that's my shortlist. So it would be Thunderclap, How to Say Babylon, Doppelganger, Wifedom, All That She Carried, and Matrescence. I wonder if I'll get any of those right. They really are a shot in the dark. As always with my prediction videos, this is just my thoughts. It's totally, totally random, mainly, <laughs> because I'm not one of the judges, and I've only read two of the books and started a third. I hope to get through some more of these books. I would really like to know now what is going to be on the shortlist, though I would have liked longer to sort of sit with the long list and try and read as many as possible before the shortlist was announced. It's a little bit odd to me that a new prize that has come out with a list of 16 non-fiction books, not all of them small, would then announce its shortlist only just over a month afterwards. I don't know, it does leave a nice long time between the shortlist and the announcement of the winner in June, so I'm hoping that whatever does appear on the shortlist I will be able to at least try those six books if I haven't tried any of them already. As I've said on my wish list, really hoping to see Wifedom and Thunderclap on the shortlist. Beyond that, I don't know, I will enjoy being pleasantly surprised, I hope. Do let me know in the comments which of the 16 books are you expecting to see on the long list? Or if you're not expecting particularly any of them, let me know which one you would most like to see on there or which one you would most like to pick up still. I'd love to hear from you, and if you have enjoyed this video today, please do give it a like, and please do consider subscribing if you haven't already. In case you are new here, I also help to host the Women's Prize Plod Along, which is a sort of unofficial, slow read-along of the Women's Prize, and this year we are including both the Women's Prize for Nonfiction and the Women's Prize for Fiction in our Plod Along, and it's hosted by me, Charlie from Charlie Brook Reads, and Gemma from Gemma Books, and we will be live on Wednesday following the announcement of the shortlist. The shortlist has been revealed that it is being announced at 6pm GMT on the 27th of March. We will be live at 8pm GMT on the 27th of March to discuss the shortlist in all its glory. We will have had a couple of hours for the three of us to think about our thoughts for the shortlist, what we're looking forward to, what we feel has been missed out and that sort of thing. 
and we would love to see you there. Do come and join us live if you would like to. I will leave a link to the live show in the description box down below and that is upcoming on Wednesday. That's all from me today and I hope very much to see you all again very soon for another video all about books here on Alice and the Giant Bookshelf. Bye for now.